Some people should really learn how to read. So in case you missed it, on Friday, July the 19th, CrowdStrike, a company specialized in cybersecurity, pushed a faulty update to their kernel-level defense software agent CrowdStrike Falcon, which caused essentially every Windows system that had it installed to break itself with a blue screen of death and infinite boot loops afterwards. Countless airlines, banking systems, hospitals and a rough estimation of around 8.5 million PCs all around the world were affected. So it wasn't that great of a Friday. But what I found pretty interesting about this whole topic was that many posts and news article authors seemingly have no idea of how endpoint protection actually works. So I thought to myself, I should clear up some misconceptions and discuss what is fundamentally wrong with these solutions. And without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So funny thing, I didn't even know that there was an outage until in the evening. And then the first thing that I noticed when going online was that many were making fun of Microsoft, saying that it was partially their fault or that this will have heavy consequences for the Windows desktop. Coming from the Linux side of things, I of course got recommended many posts and memes about people making fun of Windows. And while it was really amusing to read them, I couldn't help but notice that the general public did not really know what was going on. Many seem to think that the issue was caused by a faulty Windows update or that the software was updated this way. This is fairly to assume, since on a personal device, if you have something like Windows Home or Pro installed, then yes, some software updates happen through Windows Update. However, in CrowdStrike's case, that is completely wrong and also kind of irrelevant. Let me explain. So for starters, CrowdStrike Falcon updates itself independently from Windows and might not even require a reboot most of the times. And believe it or not, this is a behavior that you would want from a low-level antivirus software like this. Whenever new vulnerabilities are being discovered, you want to have countermeasures in place as soon as possible. And this comes in the form of the service that a company or individual purchases from the vendor and also happens all the time a low-maintenance software solution that at best doesn't cause any manual interference whatsoever. And it also wouldn't really work well otherwise. Sure, you could push updates to test clients first, but depending on the criticality, the productive ones might be vulnerable for quite a long time. And if something happens, then you, as the vendor of the software, look like you weren't doing enough. No, forget it. The testing needs to happen in-house. and then you ship it to the client. And this is how everyone expects it to work. In short, no, it wasn't a Windows update that caused the issue. It was a regular and very important expected service that happened in the background directly being pushed to the Falcon agent itself. And this behavior is not exclusive to Windows machines, but basically any operating system that has software like this. Microsoft themselves offer more advanced protection for businesses that extend the functionality of the Windows Defender and also syncs it to the cloud to constantly receive updates for new threats. Now, like with basically any provider, including CrowdStrike, you can set certain times when you want to update, but you also don't really want to wait too long, since you are of course vulnerable. Now, Microsoft could mess something up as well, and we would be in the exact same situation. This outage was being caused exclusively by CrowdStrike. And just because it only affected Windows this time does not mean that other operating systems are better. In fact, not that long ago, they messed up Linux as well, whereas several distributions kept crashing after a couple of minutes. This went mostly unnoticed because for once, there are not really all that many Linux desktops around and you typically don't install software like this on servers. Server systems in general are usually the hardest to get to anyway, at least as long as you maintain the network properly. Anyway, this could have happened on Linux and macOS as well, yet it didn't because not every operating system works the same. The Windows update could have been coded completely different from the others, which maybe didn't make this mistake. Or maybe an update includes measures against a specific vulnerability that just doesn't exist on other platforms. Again, the point is that Microsoft had nothing to do with it, except they signed the kernel level driver so that the application can load. And this got a lot of people mad. Why did Microsoft approve this driver in the first place? Eh, la -di da that's just not how this works. For once, Microsoft doesn't and also simply cannot review every single piece of software manually that comes in the form of a driver or kernel module. And the signing process is partially or probably even fully automated. 
Depending on the update process and how the module gets new data, it might not even need to be resigned at all. Like if the module itself does not change and it just reads some stuff off the main drive, then you never need to resign it. The main problem here of course is that these kernel modules exist in the first place. Linux tries to work around this issue by being open source. Anyone could contribute to the kernel in an open manner and mistakes can potentially be spotted since a lot more eyes can see the code. Kernel modules, especially closed source proprietary ones, are objectively less secure because it's not always clear what it can do on your system. Is it actually less secure? The thing is, we simply don't know, so we need to assume the worst. The whole situation around CrowdStrike is kind of funny to me because it's basically the same thing like with kernel level anti-cheats. They mess up a patch or introduce maybe even an unintentional security risk that can mess up your system or be abused by bad actors. Sure, you don't necessarily need kernel level access to write a badly written application that crashes your system, but at least here you have more countermeasures in place that the system can use. The issue is not that this happened on Windows, but what is fundamentally wrong with closed source kernel modules. And this is why Linux really sticks out of the crowd. The commitment to open source, even for some third party kernel modules, is remarkable. Sure, it might not be safe for coding wise, but it can be, since everyone has access. Now, endpoint management, or security in general, are a bit in a tough spot when it comes to open source, since you don't really want to show attackers for what you check. And then there is of course also the argument that there isn't really much money behind it, but I would definitely prefer it. Alright, so I hope I could clarify some of the wrong information about the whole CrowdStrike situation and that you also learned something new in the process. While I would really like to see more people switching to Linux, I also find it incredibly important that they don't do it on false accusations. I want them to experience Linux because they want to experience Linux. Or just, you know, have a working PC. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, then please make sure to check out our membership program, which features exclusive bonuses, as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a comment down below on what you think on the whole CrowdStrike situation. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are. I'll see you around.